Helen dumped her husband, Tony, and their two kids, but just three years later, she deeply regretted her actions. It was late evening when Tony wearily trudged up the path to his home, the weight of the day's hard labor heavy on his shoulders. Tony just couldn't shake the sweet thoughts of hitting his soft bed and finally resting his tired bones as he got closer to home. As Tony pushed open the door, he noticed their neighbor, Mrs. Jenkins, still in the living room, sitting in front of the TV with his two kids, five-year-old Michael and three-year-old Michelle. That could only mean one thing. Helen wasn't home yet. Mrs. Jenkins, their trusted neighbor, had become a regular presence in their lives, often stepping in to help care for the children during their busy schedules. The kids happily rushed to him. Despite the fact that he was terribly tired, Tony scooped the smiling kids up into the air and pecked them both on the cheeks. Tony warmly thanked Mrs. Jenkins, who was already gathering her things for all her help, and led the two kids by their shoulders back to the big sofa, where they had sat watching their favorite cartoon show. Tony didn't feel perturbed by the fact that Helen wasn't back home yet. She hardly ever came home before 10 p.m., since she had secured her recent job as a PA to a top politician just a few months ago. Tony then left his kids and sauntered upstairs to the bedroom he shared with Helen. Tony wasn't the least prepared for the shocking scene that awaited him once he opened the door to the bedroom. The whole room was in complete disarray. Traveling bags and boxes were left half opened. The floor was littered with clothes, broken makeup items. It was a real mess. But to Tony's greatest shock and disbelief, Helen's stuff was all gone. Every single last item. What on earth is this? Tony muttered under his breath as he sat down on the edge of the bed. His mind immediately began racing with different possible scenarios that could have led to this. Perhaps Helen had gone on an impromptu traveling trip with her boss, he first thought. But she would have called him and told him about the trip once she set out for it. Besides, she couldn't possibly leave for such a trip with all her stuff. Other thoughts countered the first in Tony's mind. There was only one way for Tony to find out what Helen was up to. He had to call her. So Tony promptly reached for his phone and dialed Helen's number. It rang, but it wasn't answered. He attempted three more times with the same outcome. About seven agonizing minutes flew by before Tony's phone finally beeped, and it was a text message from Helen. The text message simply read, For heaven's sake, stop calling me. Get a hold of your emotions. Stop bothering your little head, I'm fine. I just left you for my new man. A real man that can take good care of me. And oh, thanks for all the good moments we shared together at some points. And as for the kids, I know you'll take care of them. You better be a great dad. Tony's phone fell out of his hands, and he immediately began to sweat profusely. His vision became blurry. He felt an excruciating pain all over his head. It was as if someone had set him on fire. Yes, the couple had been having some issues for a while, but it was nothing serious enough to warrant Helen dumping him just like that with two kids. And what's more, Tony still deeply loved her, just like he had always loved her from day one. Tears blurred Tony's vision as he struggled to make sense of Helen's betrayal. Anguish and anger boiled within him, threatening to consume every ounce of his being. He felt completely used, dumped, lonely, and broken. In a bid to get his mind away from the turmoil raging inside him, Tony stormed out of the room and went downstairs to spend some time with his kids. He prepared cereal for the kids to have for dinner. Then he called the duo to the dining table and watched them happily eat their food. After the kids had their dinner, they returned to the living room to watch a kid quiz show. Tony decided to join them and Michelle came to sit on his lap. As the show went on, Tony patted Michelle's hair as she giggled and tried to spell the words. It was indeed a beautiful sight, but try as much as he could, Tony just couldn't get his mind off Helen's sudden departure and betrayal. Soon enough, Michelle was dozing away on Tony's lap. Tony gently lifted his beloved daughter up and carried her to her bedroom. He laid her on her bed and tucked her in. Then he returned to the sitting room and told Michael that it was time for him to go to bed too. After some resistance, Michael reluctantly headed to his bedroom. Now alone in the sitting room, Tony tried to catch up on some local news, but he just couldn't. His mind kept drifting off to Helen. Just then, his eyes caught their wedding photo. 
Helen looked so peaceful and innocent in it. He had been certain that the woman in that picture would stay by him through thick and thin. They were supposed to grow old together. It was supposed to be always and forever. Before Tony even knew it, anguished tears were slowly trickling out of his eyes. Tony and Helen had met in their second year in college. The duo met at the school library one cold winter evening. After their first meeting, things happened really fast between Tony and Helen, and they were soon fully dating. Even though they were both course mates, Tony was two years older than Helen. Over time, their relationship kept blossoming, and the lovebirds became literally inseparable. Tony was spellbound by Helen's beauty and cheerfulness. He also found her fun to be with. Helen, on the other hand, admired Tony's intelligence, wit, and kindness. Barely two years later, the duo graduated from college and promptly moved in together. Luckily for Tony, he secured a high-paying job at a big bank upon graduation. But Helen wasn't so lucky herself, as she remained without a job for quite some time. Despite the fact that she was still unemployed, Tony had no qualms whatsoever about tying the knot with Helen. Tony soon popped the question, and Helen said a big yes. Barely a month later, Tony and Helen had a modest wedding. The new couple lived quite comfortably and peacefully after their wedding. Helen was still jobless, so Tony took care of all the bills alone, but he didn't seem to mind at all. Tony was not the 50-50 bill-sharing formula type of a man. Tony was making enough money, and he strongly believed that his money was his wife's money as well. He even operated a joint account with Helen, in which he regularly put in money for her personal use. Tony simply spoiled Helen silly with love. The couple went on expensive shopping sprees and vacations. Tony generally treated Helen like a princess. He basically went out of his way to impress her with expensive gifts. Tony even bought her the latest model of Toyota Corolla as a birthday gift on her 25th birthday. Helen's joy knew no bounds. She hugged Tony very tightly the moment he handed her the car keys and kept professing her undying love for him. Barely a year later, the couple welcomed a baby boy whom they named Michael. They had Michelle two years later. A few months after Michelle's birth, luck finally shone on Helen. She secured a high-paying job as a PA to a wealthy politician named George. Tony had some major concerns about the job, as it would require Helen basically following George everywhere he went. But Helen was over the moon at securing the job after being jobless for years, so Tony shelved his concerns. Anything that would make his beloved wife happy was fine with him. Unfortunately, just two years later, a global banking crisis hit the world. The bank Tony worked at was badly hit in the financial crisis. The bank laid off all its workers and went into liquidation. That was how Tony lost his job. It didn't even take long after Tony lost his job that things began falling apart in his home. The once perfect Helen suddenly turned bad and began showing Tony her true colors. Helen began to bitterly complain about how the financial burden of taking care of all the mounting bills alone was weighing her down. She also started finding faults in Tony's every word and action. Nothing he did ever seemed to please her anymore, and Helen would go berserk on Tony at the slightest provocation. Helen would call Tony lazy and all sorts of ugly names to his face. Tony tried his best to remind Helen that he was the one who had been bearing all the financial burdens alone for many years after their marriage. Tony also made efforts to assure his wife that he was doing his very best to secure another job as soon as possible, but all his words and assurances seemed to fall on deaf ears, as Helen kept on badmouthing him at any given opportunity. Tony even started working as a menial laborer at construction sites in a bid to have some sort of reprieve from Helen's venomous mouth. But Helen wasn't satisfied. She kept on complaining that Tony's wages as a menial laborer was just peanuts. During one such argument over money one night, Helen stated that she was sick and tired of the marriage. She even threatened to leave Tony and the kids. Tony didn't take Helen's threat seriously. He thought she was just bluffing. But Helen wasn't bluffing. Barely two weeks after that argument, she made good on her threats and left Tony and the two kids. The days following Helen's sudden departure were quite hellish for Tony. He felt terribly depressed and lonely. Moreover, Michael and Michelle kept on asking him about their mom. 
Tony somehow managed to keep lying to the kids that Helen traveled on an impromptu trip with her boss and would soon be back home. The kids, both still too young to grasp the true situation, believed their dad's explanation and continued looking forward to their mom's return. But amidst the chaos of his shattered life, a determination ignited within Tony's soul. With a steely resolve, he vowed to rebuild his life from the ruins left behind by Helen's betrayal. Determined to be strong for his beloved kid's sake no matter what, Tony doubled his efforts and took fully to menial jobs. He really worked hard enough at any menial job he could lay his hands on just to be able to adequately provide for his kids. Two months later, Helen sued for divorce, and Tony simply let her go. One hot summer afternoon, Tony was walking home from work when an SUV stopped a few meters ahead of him and a young, handsome man climbed out of the SUV and shouted Tony's name. Upon hearing his name, Tony promptly glanced up and was stunned to see Dan, his best friend in high school, smiling warmly at him. Without hesitation, Tony ran over to Dan and embraced him tightly. The two friends remained locked in a tight embrace for it seemed like ages calling out each other's name in utter surprise and patting each other's back as well. At long last, the two men decided to go to a bar to catch up. The duo had been best friends in high school, but Dan had left for Canada upon graduation and that was how they lost contact. Over drinks, Tony learned that Dan was the CEO of a popular chain of grocery stores. He was in the city on a mission to open a new branch. When Dan inquired about Tony, he hesitated for a while before he opened up and told Dan everything about Helen's betrayal and his current financial struggles. Dan listened carefully and felt sad for his friend. Dan then immediately made a quick decision to help Tony financially. He promptly offered his old best friend the position of manager of the new grocery store he was about to open with a very nice salary that came with it. Tony was overwhelmed with joy. He just couldn't believe it. He accepted Dan's offer at once and kept on profusely thanking his friend for his generosity. With Tony's help, Dan opened up the new grocery store in a couple of weeks. And barely a month after meeting Dan, Tony assumed his role as the manager of the new grocery store. In just a matter of months, Tony's financial situation changed for the better. Moreover, under his efficient management, business was booming at the grocery store. Tony even hired a nanny to look after his two kids, as he felt that the kids missed their mom a lot and needed a mother figure. The nanny was a 24-year-old lady named Molly. Molly was such a nice and sweet-hearted person that the kids got glued to her at once. Soon enough, Michelle was even calling Molly mom. Molly loved and cherished Michael and Michelle like her own kids. She spoiled the kids silly with love and care. Tony was so glad to see the immediate and profound effect that Molly made on the kids and how happy the two kids were with her. Gradually, but surely, Tony and Molly started getting closer. Tony began spending more time with Molly and started opening up to her. With every moment that he spent with her, Tony found Molly to be the sweetest, most humble and understanding woman he'd ever known. Molly also admired Tony's intelligence and kindness. She was surely developing feelings for Tony, just as Tony was doing for her as well. Over time, the bond between Tony and Molly grew stronger and the duo started dating. Tony had always wanted his two beloved kids to grow up with a mother's warmth and guidance since Helen left, and he didn't need a soothsayer to tell him that Molly was the one for him. Barely six months later, Tony proposed to Molly. She gladly accepted his offer. A few weeks later, Tony and Molly quietly wedded in court. Michael and Michelle were both overjoyed after their father married Molly, as they were fully aware that Molly would be staying with them permanently from then on. Tony and Molly's marriage was a match made in heaven. Needless to say that Molly brought back joy into Tony's home. She was the best wife any man could ever ask for. Molly was worlds apart from Helen. Barely a year later, Molly gave birth to a baby girl named Lizzie. Michelle and Michael then had a baby stepsister to dote on. Michelle was especially quite fond of Lizzie and would always be found playing with her little stepsister. Tony invested heavily in stocks and bonds, and soon his wise investments started bearing fruit. The family was a quintessential small, happy family. One Sunday afternoon, almost three years after Helen's sudden disappearance, 
and Tony and Molly were at the dining table having lunch when they heard a knock on the door. Tony promptly went to answer the door, still laughing from a joke that Molly had just cracked. But as he opened the door, all the smiles left Tony's face at once, because standing at the door was none other than Helen. The stunned Tony stood transfixed to the spot, just staring at Helen with his mouth agape. Helen stared pleadingly back at Tony. At long last, Tony recovered from his initial shock and stepped out of the way for Helen to enter the house. She promptly fell on her knees, held on to one of Tony's legs, and started profusely begging him to forgive her. Tony just stood there staring down at Helen, who looked like a shadow of herself, without uttering a single word to her. Molly soon appeared on the scene carrying Lizzie, who had just woken up from her sleep on the sofa. She asked Tony if everything was okay. Yes, my love, Tony replied to Molly. Tony gently kicked to free himself from Helen's grip. He walked up to Molly and kissed her and the baby. Then, without so much of a glance back at Helen, who was watching the unfolding drama in disbelief, Tony hung his arm over Molly's shoulder and let her and the baby upstairs. The snub from Tony was just too much for her to take, that she burst out crying at once. When Helen was done crying, she slowly stood up and left the room, through the door that she had come in. Helen never had the rosy life she had dreamt of with her lover, who was actually George, the politician that she worked for. The duo had started an affair, while Helen was still serving as his PA. It was even George who had encouraged Helen to leave that poor husband of hers, as he referred to Tony. After she left her marriage to be with him, George placed Helen in one of his mansions in another city. He provided her with all the money that she ever wanted, but at the same time, George mistreated Helen both physically and emotionally. He was also an unrepentant womanizer. Finally, three years after Helen had dumped Tony and her two children, George dumped her too. George had actually been separated from his legal wife, a fact he had hidden from Helen. His wife had been diagnosed with cancer, and the thought of losing her finally made George realize that he had been living a life of vanity. Suddenly, he had a strong desire to right his wrongs, and to do that, he needed to remove Helen from his life and go back to his wife. It took a lot of pleading and family meetings before George's wife accepted him. However, she took him back with a few uncomfortable conditions, which George, out of desperation to make amends, agreed to. As soon as he got back with his wife, George detested Helen. It was as if he blamed her for everything he'd done to his wife. So, he took back everything he had ever given to her, down to her heels. He instructed Helen to leave the house he gave her. When she failed to do so before the deadline, he sent some tough-looking guys over to the house who threw her out into the street. Now penniless and deeply regretful of her actions, Helen returned to Tony to ask for forgiveness. For some reason, she still believed he would be single and broken, but how late and wrong she was. And now she would have the rest of her life to regret her selfish choices. And Tony, Molly, Michelle, Michael, and Lizzie would have the rest of theirs to love each other and be happy. If you happen to be in Tony's shoes, would you have forgiven Helen after what she did? Feel free to share your comments with us in the comments section.